Of course they didn't stop at the Baconator. They had to do breakfast. And so now we have to do it to them. The Wendy's Baconator. They just said, well, what if we just make a breakfast sandwich and put a whole lot of bacon on it, guys? <laughs> it's a breakfast sandwich with sausage, bacon, cheese, egg. I can't complain about that. It does sound good. It's just a damn square patty. I'm sick of it. Why? It bothers me so much. Every time I look at a square patty and I get it, it's like maybe a branding thing. It's like when you see the square patty, you think Wendy's. At the same time, when I see the square patty, I think, well, I'm pissed off now. Do I think this breakfast sandwich is good? No. But I do like the direction that they were going with it. So I think that if we take each element, elevate it to its highest degree, put it all together in between two glorious buns, then it's gonna be a whole lot better. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? So we're approaching the Wendy's we went to last time. That's the cursed one, like the really scary one. There is something emanating from that place. Something's wrong here. Don't you feel like this weighted, heavy darkness? So uh, <laughs> we forgot Wendy's does not serve breakfast at this hour. It's 1 p.m. So we're gonna try and order one. Hi, uh, I know you guys stopped serving the uh, the breakfast Baconator. Is there any way that we could get one made at all? Breakfast bacon is for the breakfast. We're having the breakfast. There's there's no way I can I can do it. Can I pay extra? for it? No. <laughs> no worries, thank you. Message received. All right, we'll be back. It's the next day, we sent someone out and uh, I didn't wanna go back to the spooky Wendy's. It's very scary. Scary. So we've got the bag. Fries should be both hot and crispy. If yours aren't, let us know. Yeah, breakfast time. Hi. Ah! This what y'all excited about? Here's what it's supposed to look like. So far away. Someone assembled this. Mm. The egg is completely overcooked, but that's a different conversation. This is actually one of the better sandwiches I think I've had at a fast food restaurant in a long time. It looks terrible. The egg is long gone. This egg died 30 years ago. The sausage patty is seasoned exactly how I like it. It's really, 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 really nice. The bacon's bacon, bacon's good. The bun's not good. That being said, this is one of the better sandwiches in totality, breakfast or not, that we've had on this channel. So this might be a little bit of a challenge. Let's find out. If you've never had this, let me break it down. Our sandwich contains a homemade jalapeno cheese breakfast sausage patty, an excessive amount of bacon, a Swiss cheese sauce, of course our famous buns, and some oozing eggs over easy. We've seen our buns many times, so I'm gonna be quick here. See the full recipe for these on my Burger King Whopper video. Link in the description for that. Mix 170 milliliters of water with 125 milliliters of milk. Get that warm. Whisk in 12 grams of bread machine yeast. Then whisk in one whole egg and one egg yolk. In a medium-sized bowl, mix together 525 grams of bread flour, 60 grams of granulated sugar, four grams of amylase, and Eight grams of fine sea salt. Once that's combined, add your liquid to a stand mixer, begin mixing, add your flour gradually till all of it's added, then mix. Till smooth, then add in 14 grams of softened unsalted butter and 30 grams of softened bacon fat. All I did was replace two thirds of the butter with bacon fat, which is totally optional. Mix till smooth and combined, shape into a big old bowl. Pop into a bowl, cover with plastic wrap, rise one hour, punch it down, cut into eight even pieces and roll those pieces into toit balls. Place in the center of a greased four inch metal English muffin ring. Jeez, that's a mouthful. Press their tops with the bottom of a greased cup, cover lightly with greased plastic wrap, proof 30 minutes and bake at 375 Fahrenheit for 15 minutes or until a beautiful, glistening golden brown emerges. Finish with a brush of melted butter. Remove your mufferings and let them cool. Now let's talk jalapeno cheese breakfast sausage. We'll need two pounds or 900 grams of ground pork, but I want it to be fatty. Okay, none of that 90% lean bull so my recommendation would be to grind your own with a nice fatty Boston butt roast. But hey, not everyone wants to be a real one and grind their own pork. I get it. So anyway, to your pork, you'll add two jalapenos that have been placed over an open flame until completely charred all over, then wiped of all of its char, deseeded, and finally diced. Follow that with two teaspoons or 14 grams of garlic powder, two teaspoons or four grams of ground fennel seed, half a teaspoon or half a gram of onion powder, one teaspoon or three grams of jalapeno powder, which is optional, but you could totally make yourself in my Make Your Own Spices guide, link in the description. You like that plug? Yeah. Two and a half teaspoons or 10 grams of kosher salt, one teaspoon or five grams of MSG. Oh, did you not know that Wendy be doing that? One tablespoon or 16 grams of granulated sugar. Give that a mix till thoroughly combined. Then add in one and a half cups or 85 grams of grated cold cheddar cheese. Mix till combined and finally fold in one tablespoon or two grams of finely chopped sage. Moving on to Swiss cheese sauce. Very easy. Heat one and a half tablespoons of 21 grams of unsalted butter in a medium sauce pot over medium heat. Once melted. 
Add in one and a half tablespoons or 13 grams of all-purpose flour, whisk together and cook for 30 seconds, then whisk in two tablespoons or 30 grams of heavy cream and one and a quarter cup or 300 milliliters of whole milk. Once that starts to thicken, add in half a cup or 33 grams of grated raclette and half a cup or 33 grams of grated gruyere. Keep mixing that bad boy until beautifully smooth, glossy, and sensual. If it's a bit too thick, simply add a splash or two of milk until it has a consistency that runs just a little bit. Add a small pinch of grated nutmeg, season to taste with salt, and your cheese sauce is done. You're kind of looking for roughly the consistency of slightly runny mayo. That sounds gross, but you know where I'm going here. So I managed to get our bacon cartoonishly wavy and perfectly cooked with this method. Get yourself a good old fashioned bacon sheet, line it with foil, add one pound of thick cut sliced bacon in one even layer, filling out your sheet as much as possible, but not overlapping. One layer, right? Not one and a half layers. Pop that into an oven set to 400 Fahrenheit and and honestly, look, it's fine if the oven's cold when you add it or if the oven's already on from baking your buns, just the times will change. So if it's off, it'll take around 20 to 25 minutes, but if it's already on, it'll take about 10 to 12 minutes. Once your bacon is cooked and crispy or floppy, to your liking, pull it out and drain on a paper towel. This method will not only get you the most evenly cooked bacon, but it will also get you the most tender, luxurious tasting bacon you'll ever have. Respect and shout out to the homies that like their bacon flaccid, okay? I get that. Sometimes it makes sense. It's time to finish this thing off. First, your sausage. Form that into a four to five ounce ball, then shape it into a half inch thick square patty that's slightly wider than your buns because it will shrink a bit. Preheat a flat top or a nonstick skillet over a medium high, lightly grease it with oil, and then add your patty and sear for two to three minutes. Flip and sear for another two to three minutes. Now, once it has some nice browning and is cooked all the way through, about six to eight minutes total, you have a beautiful patty packed full of oozing cheese, juicy, salty breakfast sausage goodness. Will this sausage patty bust it down sensual style? Is it goaded with the sauce? Sorry, I've been on TikTok too much this weekend. For the egg, Lightly butter or grease a nonstick skillet and set over medium heat. Then once that's hot, add your ring mold to the center. Crack two whole eggs into your ring mold. Try to keep the yolk centered as best you can. Season the top with salt and pep. Then add a splash of water and cover with a lid for about one to two minutes. I didn't have a lid, so I used a bowl. And once your egg white is fully cooked, but the yolk is still runny, it's done. Pop that out of your ring mold and there she blows. A slightly jarring to look at puck of egg that may or may not be the key to our sandwich. Now to assemble, toast your buns. Always. Shouldn't have to ask. Add a nice generous spoonful of your Swiss cheese sauce to your bottom bun. Spread her out a bit. Add your sausage. Patty, a nice slice of American cheese. Melt that optionally with a torch. One to two slices of bacon cut in half so it fills the sandwich nicely. Gently, your soft egg hockey puck. A slice of aged cheddar cheese. See, a nice mix of highs and lows on the sandwich. Melt that optionally with a torch. And finally, another barrage of bacon, hilariously wavy. Generously sauce your top bun, slap your knee, call your grandma, crown your king, and tell her you ain't coming home today because this god dang sandwich is gonna need your full attention when you sit down and take your first bite. Now let's see how we fared against the demonic Wendy. So I did state that I thought this was one of the better sandwiches I've had, which is ironic because their burger was horrible. Mamma mia, papa pia, spicy meatball. I mean, come on, the layers? I don't even know if I can fit this whole thing in my mouth, but I sure can try. Ah! I was like in a field of flowers, but the flowers weren't flowers, it was bacon. This is single-handedly the greatest breakfast sandwich that I have ever made in my entire life. And honestly, it is thanks to Wendy's because the amount of bacon, the type of sausage, plus that Swiss cheese sauce is what makes this special. Pano, come here, you bad boy. Are you ready? Emotionally. There's so much going on. That is spectacular. Number two. Mmm. All right, it's not bad. Well, yours just is on another absolute level. It's kind of unfair. Out of 10, this gets a 6.32584444444, one and a half out of 10. That's high praise. If you want to sit down and enjoy a breakfast with your family, your children, your best friends, people who bring you joy, then this is going to be the sandwich that you make. Yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> you want to know what else has big wavy strips of meat in your face? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our Wendy's Breakfast Baconator. Probably one of the most beautiful breakfast sandwiches we've ever made on this channel. Let's take a look at just a few of the other ones. Bing, bang, boom. Look at those. Which one do you want? I did the square patty thing, and it changed literally nothing. The sausage patty we made was perfect, but the square still pisses me off. Just make it circular if you want to be a cool person. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. I'm a